and, and one of the powerful parts of my work I find, especially at any level of, of athlete, um, even organizations, right, that is understanding what is your real drive and, and motivation. And some people, majority of people, will have their motivations sitting in these external motivations, these extrinsic motivations, which is drive, uh, which is uh, money, success, outcome, results, prestigious clubs, tournaments, leadership boards, whatever it might be, right? Now, while those in themselves are not bad, because we do need the recognition that whatever efforts we're putting in, we're going in the right direction and we're sort of creating and building something, the problem arises is when people put all of their motivation in those and that they are never guaranteed. And that's why when we then come back to people getting angry over things in games where they can't control them, like a referee decision or a, an outcome, a result, that creates stress, anxiety and, 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 and frustration because it's something you can't control. But if you have your intrinsic motivations as to why you're doing it because you genuinely love the process of doing it, they end up being more value driven about you as a human being and you as a character. And then you can just take that wherever you want. You can hold on to that. So it's having like an understanding of like, do I have any of that? Do I have any of that intrinsic motivation? And I'm, I'm always blown away by how many pro athletes that are currently playing or have finished that never had that. And that's when the, the suffering kind of happens for them is because they are unable to accept this thing that's gone, which is the extrinsic part. They can't have the results. They can't have the status and that anymore but because they haven't been able to fall back on a, an intrinsic motivation. And if you can do that, then the hardships become, I feel, a little bit easier because they're telling you, they tell you something about your character. Now, for me personally, I used to, I used to love things when they got harder because I was like, great, I can draw upon characteristics and values and myself and behaviors that I want to uphold. And through a bit of self-reflection, I've realized that I was very value-driven as a youngster. I was very built. I had this bigger idea of actually who I was going to become as an individual rather than the things I was going to achieve. Now, I had I wasn't consciously making that decision. I was doing that through, I was watching like motivational videos and reading and just checking like these role models that weren't even in my sport that I was idolizing over and over again. And for me, it was, again, this character, this intrinsic motivation for me that even meant that when I'm faced with some sort of hardship or success, how I deal with this as an individual is really important. And I, I value that as much as the outcome, the result, because now I realize you can't guarantee those things. They're not guaranteed. You can try as much as you want, but success, outcome, money, whatever value of extrinsic motivation you've put on something, they're not guaranteed. Um, mm. And yeah, I, I think you do, it's what you do with your hardship that's as important. So mm. do you do you do something about it or do you allow it to, do you allow it to define you and put you in a, a pit of misery and, and self-pity? Yeah, I think the awareness of whatever your hardship is uh, it's particularly valuable when it comes to being part of a team or especially leadership roles, because I think whilst you might be driven by the hardship in a ignorant way uh, to deliver well on your own performance and, and, you know, go out and bat really well or, you know, go out and, and play a good game of rugby, um, it might hinder you from interacting well within the team or being the best teammate or and certainly being the best leader. So this is something my own experience is that I, my ability to relate to other people and to prioritize the members of my team over my own sort of self-interested desire to win and perform well um, increased immensely once I kind of understood the way my brain was working in some of these moments. So the old, the old motivation, which was uh, had driven me for a long time, I actually sometimes had to put that on the back burner. Like it's always there because it's years in the making and it's part of your psyche and it's actually okay to hold on to that stuff. Um, but the ability to notice it and put it on the back burner sometimes to be a better human being normally and to be a better teammate and a better leader was massive for me. I think the one thing I've, I'm really interested around leadership is, is owning 
mistakes and things like that. I, I Jocko Willink, uh, the former Navy SEAL, wrote the book Extreme Ownership. He talks hugely around owning your mistakes as a leader. I think I even heard him say on a podcast that, and it's one of my biggest gripes with politicians, just generally, is that they have a mistake and they just don't own it. And they don't see the power in owning your mistake as a leader. And I think this is where, again, go back to rugby, someone like Sia Khaleesi, brilliant at doing that, like sort of owns this fact that he is human. He is able to make that and draws upon the strength of the people around him rather than many leaders can get into the mindset and the fallacy that they need to have all the answers and therefore if they make the mistake not only does it say something poorly about them but then who they are and that potentially jeopardizes them as a leader but in that creation of this avatar of someone who is perfect getting everything right the actual detriment to the people that are following that person that's creating either an environment of well we must get everything perfect we can't show mistake we can't show weakness and in doing that when you never actually own your mistakes you're never going to get better so how does that sit in your world like what, what what's your sort of take on that side of leaders owning their mistakes yeah well i, I mean i've 100 percent been there as the person that felt like they needed to have all the answers as well and be completely infallible and trying to live that life as a leader for a while uh was torturous because you it's obviously totally impossible um and you have to kind of have the um you have to be strong enough in your sense of self to get things wrong i always found it harder to get things wrong in terms of my leadership than i did on the field i was like if i uh missed a tackle or messed up like i'd be pretty hard on myself internally but it would pass quite quickly if it was my own mm -hmm. thing but if there was a uh I don't know, some, something to you know making a call on behalf of the team or directly impacting a teammate i found those difficult mistakes to make i didn't want to allow myself to make mistakes in those areas so often that actually led to inactivity for me so i just try and swerve which you can't you know it's, you just mm -hmm bang your head against the brick wall in those scenarios because you, you have to do that in, in the leadership role. Um, and so it was kind of reminding myself it's okay to make mistakes as long as, so checking in again with my intention, make, like I want the best for these people. And so whatever call I make is based on that intention. And that may, it kind of unlocked the doors to the decision-making. Um, so that was pretty useful. Um, and as you say, being, being driven by your values, if you're, driven out of kind of love and care for your team then you feel quite free about making decisions on their behalf because you're like well i'm doing my best for everyone here so uh if i get it wrong sorry about that but i was doing my best and you can, it's easy to say now isn't it but you know what it's like when you're in the moment and um and you're surrounded by by your teammates um but it's funny i mean the role modeling thing is huge isn't it if your your ability to say oh i got that wrong but also the way you do that. So, um, I mean, a classic example in rugby would be you're watching footage of training or a match and someone does something wrong that leads to the opposition scoring a try. Someone misses a tackle or whatever. Um, and there's there are nice examples, and there's constantly examples of this, where you might say, uh, I, don't, oh, I, I know that, Lewis, you missed the tackle, but actually I've stitched you up a bit there because I pushed too high at the line and left you a bit vulnerable 1v1 against their you know, best attacker. I think I could have done better there. So there's, there's that's those are nice noticing moments. It used to almost go the other way sometimes where people would be like, um, so willing to put it on their own head. But we're like, we don't want to create, <laughs> like, thank, thank you. And like, thanks for noticing and having the humility to say that you messed up there. But also it actually doesn't matter. Like this is player A and player B. It doesn't have to be, you know, Tom and Lewis who are making the mistakes. Do you know what I mean? So uh, particularly with young players, sometimes analyzing stuff, you just have to label the players, player one, two, three, four, when you're watching the video, even though they, they know that that's, oh, that's me, that's Tom, that's Lewis. Like, because you, you've got to take the sense of self out of it when you're analyzing this stuff, because you're trying to get the objective learnings. And it's very hard to see the wood for the trees when... <laughs> Your, your brain's telling you failure, lack, you're, you're worthless because you made a mistake, which is essentially for a lot of people what's going on when they're 
watching themselves mess up on, especially on the international stage. Um, so kind of th that disassociation was is useful. But yeah, particularly as a leader, I think if you're able to acknowledge fallibility, it's hugely powerful in terms of people being able to relate to you, um, your own well-being and happiness as well as, as a captain or a leader. Um, and it's just it's just real. It's authentic. And it helps move things along. That's another thing. I mean, the amount of hurdles you create for yourself trying to get everything right and trying to be perfect is uh, it's ludicrous and it's hard work. And energy sapping and, I, and i've kind of been there and done it on on both sides well actually it's not really both sides it's like constantly sliding along the scale of yeah. doing it well doing it less well but that's the that's the beauty of it as well right that's the that's again this kind of beautiful dance that we get like you're not going to get everything right all the time but hey if you've enjoyed that video then you can click right here to watch the full unedited version of that episode also don't forget to subscribe to this channel by clicking the button below I'll see you soon.